Tavoli News today. Newly elected MPs sworn in amidst calls for duty. Prime Minister Manele briefs Parliament on government's 100-day plan. Central Honiara MP urges swift action on ailing economy. Hello and welcome. I'm Lisa Ossifello. The newly elected members of parliament took their oaths of allegiance today at the parliament chambers, marking the commencement of the 12th parliament. Speaking before the new MPs, Speaker Patterson Oti reminded them of their duties as parliamentarians. As you begin your journey as members of the 12th parliament, I bid all members to always bear in mind your primary constitutional duties as representatives of your respective constituencies and as legislators mandated to make laws for the peace, order and good government of this nation. Your primary duty is to Parliament and you discharge this duty by performing these functions to the best of your ability regardless of political affiliation and interests. I have confidence in every member that whichever side you find yourself in over in the next four years, four years, you will always remember that you are first and foremost a parliamentarian. Well, mostly a reminder, uh, because a number of them, half, almost half of the house, have came back, but most of them are also new. So that message has to go out, make them uh, utter no or have some idea of what not expectation the people blow you me, the role blogata as members of parliament. Number one, I'm actually to do what I'm law making. Um, there are four followers for you see law here under the civic awareness department of parliament, uh, the role of member of parliament. And that's the one we will try for pushing law, uh, lame out law here. Uh, it's a uh, lawmaker, uh, budget debate, oversight, and um, representation. So I'm not of the role of a member of parliament. So the summary, what let me tell him to is a summary of, of Fofala exercise here. And there are of course other, other considerations, but first and foremost, this is a legislature in parliament and for lawmaking. So you come in here fully uh, conscious of what now role expected of you for you contribute law, um, law making, law parliament, law Solomon Islands. The law where you make a him not only for your constituency, but you and for country as a whole. So the constituents are contributing uh, to the law making process through the members of parliament who are elected by them. Before the oaths were taken, the Speaker revealed that all members except one had disclosed their personal interests. There's a requirement for you to comply with them, uh, you know, um, a declaration yeah, of interest law you, um, because I'm also tie in with them, the leadership code uh, commission, yeah, you have to declare what not interest law you, because nobody you conflict with them. Unless you make a declaration, that all the members of parliament were issued those documents for what to fill him up. Yeah, if you not fill him up, then of course you cannot you cannot take part yet in the proceedings of parliament. So meeting today, what I cannot take part because they have not submitted uh, those. I think to Falana, I, I, I caught one of them, yeah. Tavoli News understands that the said minister who did not disclose his personal interest is the member of parliament for Ulawa Ugi. The other member of parliament, Nesto Giro, is out of the country on work duties. All 48 members, except these two, were present in parliament. John Patterson Oti has been re-elected as the Speaker of National Parliament. Oti was nominated by Prime Minister Jeremiah Minelli, South Villa Lavella MP Frederick Kologeto, North East Golokanal MP Jamie Vokia, and North New Georgia MP George Temahua. Oti stood unopposed as the only candidate for the role and assumed the position of Speaker in the 12th Parliament, marking his second term as Speaker of the National Parliament. They asked me, they said, I have interest in 2019, then we come back as High Commissioner, I mean, finish come, 
what asking me, uh, me no meaningful comeback. They ask me say, okay, up to you. So they did a nomination. So same, same uh, strategy me apply on this one. They ask me, Peter Sanol, uh, Deputy Prime, uh, Prime Minister Tobosia, everyone will go away now what asking me. We say, answer lo you fall now here, or so. So that, that's how me, 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 me no, me no why for him, because me say that job, you know, apply for him, yeah, but will not for looks away. Meanwhile, Northwest Coral Canal MP Francis Sade was the sole nominee for Deputy Speaker position. Sade was nominated by East Malaita MP Manasse Mailana, by Goasifola MP Makareo Tagini and South Coral Canal MP Roland Seleso. As the only nominee, Sade automatically assumed the role of Deputy Speaker in the 12th Parliament. Speaker-elect, uh, first of all, I'd like to congratulate you for, the, uh, for your re-election as Speaker of Parliament. Thank you, uh, the Prime Minister, the Deputy Prime Minister and the Cabinet Ministers, uh, Opposition Leader, the nominators. Thank you so much for giving the trust uh, to be the Deputy Speaker of the 12th Parliament. And I will look forward to all your support and working together to make sure that uh, the business of Parliament goes well as we proceed in the next four, four years. With that, we, so I thank you so much uh, for giving this opportunity. Thank you. Prime Minister Jeremiah Manele said the special adjournment of Parliament is to give the government time to finalise its 100-day work plan on the first day of Parliament Manele used this opportunity to brief the newly elected members on the progress of the policies and work undertaken by the government for national unity and transformation. So Speaker, I have appointed all cabinet ministers. They have been briefed by their respective ministries. I have also appointed a policy team that is now working to complete our 100 days policies as well as the translation of these policies and priorities for the next four years. So we look to completing these policies and translating them into implementation strategies over the coming few weeks. Hence, the special adjournment will also give my government, the Government for National Unity and Transformation, time to further develop and refine our policy framework for the 12th Parliament. But I guess, Mr. Speaker, the next few weeks, um, 50 members of Parliament will also need time to set up their respective constituencies. And of course, also on the government side, uh, we'll also need time uh, to develop our legislative agenda uh, for this year and the next uh, three years. When we resume on the 10th uh, of June, uh, we expected to elect uh, the Governor General. Uh, he or she, of course, will be uh, formally appointed, as you saw, on the 7th uh, of July. And once government policies and programs are ready, uh, thereafter, uh, we will uh, call Parliament for His Excellency to deliver a speech from the throne outlining uh, government policies and programs. So that is the reason uh, for this special adjournment, Mr. Speaker, to give a time for the new government to settle in and also uh, complete its policies, develop our legislative uh, agenda, but also constituencies need time to set up their respective uh, uh, constituency offices. Newly elected Member of Parliament for Central Honiara, Gordon Darcy Lilo, said the country's ailing economy. He said the country hasn't been with a fully functional government since the dissolution of Parliament on the 31st of December 2023. There is not a new government. The same government behind me. Uh, rule, Law 11 Parliament. I think we need to show some seriousness for this is facing our country. We are more of a team and come out, geopolitics. Forget him about all geopolitics yesterday. The economy of Solomon is going down here. Let's focus on key little issues. 
for rekindling back more the economy of our country. That's what the people are waiting for. Kamoji. And the good ideas should be coming out from the government. Minister of Finance is ready. I think he's always ready. So Prime Minister and Deputy Suppositorian are ready. Give him opportunity for the Minister of Finance, you know, to be ready and then give that hope, you know, to our people. You may cannot continue for all them come to here and govern properly. I'm talking about substantial governance of our country. This time, six months now. You may go for another three months, one, nine months now. In defence of the previous government's performance, former Prime Minister Manasi Sogovare stated that the current government must not forget the calamities encountered by the last parliament, which contributed to the performance of the Democratic Coalition Government of Advancement. I must admit. But yes, uh, we use the bold terms like the government is broke, basically. It is a very, very bold, bold statement that we make a statement <laughs> from the former parliament. Government revenue, cash flow is struggling. We will not deny, Mr. Speaker, that uh, the country is facing difficult times, Mr. Speaker. And people forget very easily, forget very easily, uh, Mr. Speaker, for the last five, five years. We make it very clear to the nation. We make it very clear to the nation our policy is to float the economy, and that's what we did, Mr. Speaker. We float the economy. And uh, uh, yes, when we managed to grow the economy, uh, by cost of 2%. And that is, a, that, that is a, 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 an achievement given the difficult times that we may be facing as a country. We have the COVID-19 and throughout the uh, length uh, of the five years that we got, most of the five years is COVID-19. Borders closed. Export no go-go, Mr. Speaker. And people forget that very easily. And if that isn't enough, Mr. Speaker, we came out of COVID-19 and lo and behold, we have riot. 2021, politically motivated too, yeah. Mr. Speaker. Yeah. I'm also here. So, so I was just waiting for you for you to rule him out of uh, any motivation of these things. But Prime Minister asking very simple matter no more. In my journey, we cast ten so that we will come out now over something so lessen the opportunity when the policy come out and let's debate it. Prime Minister Jeremiah Manele also attributed the performance of the Democratic Coalition for Government Advancement to the issues faced by the country under the leadership of Manasseh Sogovare in the 11th Parliament. Mr. Speaker, I also wish to acknowledge my predecessor, the former Prime Minister, the MP for his choice, and the Minister of Finance and Treasury for his courage, commitment, and service in serving our people and country over the last five or so years. Say, I must say that the last term of the 11th Parliament was perhaps the most challenging since independence. We had a global pandemic and a riot, not to mention the geopolitical tension in our region. But we perceived it, we perceived it under the leadership of the MP for his choice. Let me also take this opportunity to acknowledge the support that Madam Sugawari and your children, including your extended family and the people of Choiso, have rendered towards my predecessor during his tenure in office. At the same time, Prime Minister Jeremiah Manele emphasizes that the 100-day policy aims to address the crucial issues raised by members of parliament during today's session. This is a simple motion. It's a very simple motion, Mr. Speaker. Uh, it, uh, it is to allow the government uh, to work, Mr. Speaker. And now that you are elected, uh, government can now move uh, to have government business uh, placed uh, in your house. Say so the hundred days policy uh, is the direction uh, that uh, uh, the government is taking. And this is the direction that uh, uh, this house wants to know, I guess. The, the hundred days policy will outline how government will act it will also uh, deal with finance, health and education. And as I've said uh, earlier on during uh, my victory speech, the government's priority will be on the economy, will be on the economy. Health and education are also critical, and that's in our agenda. So as law and order, 
And there are priorities, there are priorities, ongoing priorities, continuing priorities, but also new priorities uh, that will be contained in the ANRADES policy and, of course, the translation document and, and others. The economy, yes, is critical. Uh, infrastructure is part and parcel of building that economy. So that is a priority for the government. Parliament is adjourned until the 10th of June.